Welcome to UCF Nightline, your source for UCF sports and former player information. All right, Night Nation, this is Andrew Fagley alongside... To my left over here from the 1148 Studios is... Troy Andrzak. Thank you for listening. All righty. And this is episode number 17. It is Sunday the 16th of November. I like how you just checked your watch for that, and there's a giant little thing right there. 16th of November, 2014. That's, that's true. That's true. That's fine. Whatever. Um, this episode and all episodes, by the way, are brought to you by... UCFNightlinePodcast.com. Um, that is our website, obviously, and we are going to have quite a bit more information on there if you have visited. If you have not visited, it, again, it is UCFNightlinePodcast.com. We are expanding our content. We are very much expanding our content, and you could look for the website to be redesigned here probably in the next, I will say the next month, because I don't think that it's going to happen before that, but... We are going to try to make that the place where you can go at any time to get the most current UCF information. Um, we might also have a message board on there at some point. It's, of course, going to be a free one, no, no subscription type thing, um, just so everybody can talk amongst themselves and, you know, we can use that as well. Also, you could talk smack to Andrew because let me tell you, that's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. I enjoy it. Um, anyway, also you can call us at 407-205-7427 um, and leave us messages and ask a question, and we'll, we'll play that on the air. Last week we didn't have time, so we're going to get to it this week. Sorry, John. Yeah, John has a question for us this week, uh, one of our wonderful listeners from the D.C. area. and we again, need to recruit that area. I know, yeah. Maryland, Virginia, D.C., there's some talent up there. Yeah, they need to... Baseball, football... Maybe these guys... Lacrosse, floor hockey, badminton, <laughs> they got it up there, man. Uh, I'm actually serious, there's quite a bit of talent up yeah. there. Yeah, do they play um, wa uh, washers up there? What? <laughs> you know, washers, the game washers? Forget it. Your generation played some weird games. Dude, there were some people playing washers the other day for tailgating. You've never played washers? And you're from the South. Clearly, you've never look at my played face. washers. It, okay, is that whatever. when you used to wash your, your clothes in the creek? No, it's when you take a washer about the size of a silver dollar, and you throw it into a little hole, and it's ten times more fun than cornhole because the hole's way smaller, you know, and it's a little washer you're throwing in there, and it goes, bink, you know, makes a good noise. It's fun. It's a fun game. Wow. All right, we will, we will let you go on that one. We'll. I'm going to give you a stick <laughs> to dig in a hole in the ground. Seriously, man, washers. you need to check it out sometime. It's a fun game. All right, we're also we're going to talk uh, American recap here. We're going to talk uh, men's basketball. Um, they face off against um, Stetson, Stetson tonight, tonight we at played 7 p.m. No other team as much as we've played Stetson. Really? Yeah, we kind of the... own Stetson. I mean, they're Stetson. You know, yeah, they right. have a really good soccer team and you know a solid baseball. Program. I actually went past their their uh, campus for the first time yesterday. I had never driven through. It's Deland, it's pretty, right? Yeah. Downtown Deland. I just happened to be coming back from the forest up there, and and drove through there, and it was it's beautiful. Yeah, that's what the law school there. I'm gonna have to go up there and do some uh, photography at some point. No, that's not, that's, not that's a good campus. place. Um, yeah, so we're playing Stetson. It's at seven o'clock, um, and we've played them a ton. We're up like twenty five. Okay, we have twenty five victories out of forty games. But we had to vacate one due to violations. Yeah, it says we've played them three times. We've played them a lot more than three times. We've played them 40. 39 of them count. 24 <laughs> of the wins count. We beat them in the A-Sun. Oh, that's the largest Stetson win. Stetson has won three times. I'm sorry about that. Eh, we're a little more. We have a long-standing rivalry, per se. It's not a rivalry now. Now it's just a smashing because we've grown, and they haven't. It's a very good academic school, you know, with some good programs coming. They just got their football program. Uh, it's always fun playing the Hatters. You know, they're just down the road. Uh, their fans are actually they're not obnoxious, so when they show up, you, it's just a good time. I like playing Stetson in all sports. Right on. 
So we did not play Stetson in football this week, of course. We played Tulsa. Stetson would have put up more of a fight. I honestly believe so. Um, my pick was four points last week. and uh, I'm glad you amended your, <laughs> your math there. My pick was wrong. Um, we Obviously, UCF won 31-7. What a game. Um, there was a lot of good things that happened in that game. There were a couple bad things. There were a couple weird things. The, the, the main good thing is we beat an opponent solidly that we were supposed to beat. Right. Period. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I probably had the most fun at this game than I've had in a while. Because and why is that? I, I may have drank a little much during uh during the the tailgate but so i don't remember a lot about the first half you were just trying to keep yourself warm with whiskey but man was it ever it was a good time i honestly can say that i was a little bit more relaxed and not you know looking at the game as much as an analyst and someone that does a podcast Have you look at any of them as an analyst yes i do of course I do, because we do this show. Jeez, come it, on. It literally looked like I brought in a homeless person, because he had that beard, which you can grow a beard in like nine minutes. Yeah, so I had 13 huge thing. days. He smelled going. of alcohol, and he, he he walked in. It wasn't quite a straight line. Oh, come on. It, it was... I it was not out of control whatsoever. You were not out of control. You were... You, I was having fun. I had a good time. It reminds me of my own college days. That's not true because I played and I never got drunk at the football games. But anyway. Oh, but if you did, we could rename you. What? I was going to say, Sean, they didn't get drunk at the game. But Sean yeah. Hoffman and Sean Galvin afterwards. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess they got drunk after the UCF game. They were suspended, by the Which way. Which game? By the, I'm sorry, the after UConn. the UConn game. They were suspended for this game because of supposedly a drunken... Listen, whatever. That, were you not prompted to drink after that UConn game? Absolutely. I I'm surprised they one. weren't drinking on the sidelines during the game. I mean, that's the only way that game could have been palatable from the sideline. They were miserable. There's nothing to do in Connecticut. So you, you can't blame yeah. the kids. Multiple sources have told that the uh, suspensions were related to public intoxication. On Sunday, following the 37-29 loss at UConn, suspension sources said it was supposed to be for one game. Now, O'Leary says in the press conference um, after the, the game, he says he's not sure when he's going to have those guys back. That uh, Yeah, he also lied and said he thought Corte did a decent job and then moving forward it'll be good. Yeah. Um, I was so, ready to recruit one of those baton twirlers. To go kick field goals for him. Yeah, he missed two field goals, uh, chip shots, ones that he should never have missed. Um, Dude, he shanked so that third one I so think, far left. Yeah, I think that it will be very sad, especially, I believe both Moffat and Galvin are seniors, correct? That How sad would that be for them not to get to play on senior day coming up next week if they don't get to start or play senior day? Yeah, I, I agree. I think that's crap. It's total crap. I also think it's crap that Moffitt wears jorts. He's been my favorite kicker in UCF history. I don't even know what jorts are. So When you were younger and you outgrew your jeans, your mom just cut off the bottom of your jeans to give you jorts. Those are called cutoffs. Jean shorts. Jorts. We combine words in this day and age. There's so many words in the English. When you were born, there were probably only 100,000 words in the English language. Now there's like 700,000. So okay. now we combine some words. All right. The rest of our older listeners that are over the age of whatever, 30 or 25, like he acts, um, you need to stand with me here. And Yeah. I'm sure you're just going to have a, a bunch of this walkers is, next to you. I'm 41 years old. Come on. I've Jesus been, we've Christ. been over this. Leap years. 164. Okay. Whatever. James Buchanan was president. Anyway. Before. We were actually talking about something important there, and then we were rudely interrupted. Jorts. That's what rudely interrupted my day. <sighs> okay. Anyway. Uh, yeah. So. Have you lost focus? Pretty much. Hi. Right, we'll go back to the Tulsa game. There's a lot of things to like. Justin Holman being one of them. Absolutely. You got his stats right there? I do. Would you like to see him? Yeah. 
Right, Call them you... out to the listeners. All right. Well, you uh, kind of didn't give me the opportunity to do that yet. That was the leading. You were supposed to be talking a little bit there while I was. Holman to... did a good job. He threw the ball really well. Bashad <laughs> Perriman caught a touchdown. He hit 77 yarder, longest of his career, to uh, Mr. Joshua Reese. That was a beautiful ball right over top down the sideline. Reese did a good job. It was, I mean, if, if anything, it was a smidgen underthrown, but Reese had his man beat. He used good body control to shield him from the ball and was gone once he got it. He made some good reads. He had no help from the offensive line in blocking. That Normally, our offensive line, their best ability is pass blocking. It was not this time, I don't Holman, believe. Holman, you know, he had to spin out from sack opportunities, had a guy in his face. He made good reads, good Was throws. it one of the touchdowns where he uh, spun away from the guy like he had him and then he through it was that a touchdown or was that just a long pass uh, it, was just, it, it was on the highlights i remember yeah, because yeah. he spun out on that one it was amazing no no he 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 made some good plays with his feet yeah. he was comfortable we got him in the game early got right. him into a rhythm right. tulsa he was 16 out. of 27 by the way i have the stats now for 291 yards three touchdowns his longest one being 77 yards and three sacks it could have been eight sacks yeah he did an excellent job avoiding the situation. Absolutely. There were a lot of a lot of good things that, that came out of this game. I think the team, you know, played really as, as one. They gelled the offensive line. Unfortunately, Joey Grant wasn't in there when we were going to talk about that. Joey Grant um, is technically out for the season. Um, I, he said that he could be used as an emergency, but only in an emergency he's going to have to have shoulder surgery again. Which or Joe, you know that's got to be frustrating for a him. A total bummer from him. He's a competitor, and um, you know he wants to be out there. Yeah. Uh, a good aspect, our running game. Stan Beck had a pretty good game until he entered his shoulder. You saw him on the sideline there when George O'Leary was having him do the, you know, the hokey pokey and putting his arms up. You know, yep. he, he had that extension, that mobility, so that's not a bad sign at all. It means he'll probably be back next week. Dontravius Wilson. Wilson was uh, had 17 carries for 91 yards. At his uh, first career touchdown. Yeah. He also, and I pointed this out to Andrew a few times, I was very impressed with his uh, pass blocking, his ability to pick up the blitz. He had some nice run out. There was a couple other times when you know no one else picked up the blitz but him, but he did really well, and that's going right. to get you on the field more. Absolutely. And he did a better job of setting up his runs, where instead of just running straight to the hole, he cut into it, and he had a lot of good runs, and he broke that one. He run. averaged 5.1 yards per carry. Um, Stanbeck actually uh, averaged 3.2 yards. Uh, Wilson, as I said, was uh, 17 for 91 yards. And Stanbeck actually ran 17 for 59 yards. And who was that big boy wearing number four? Micah Reed. I know it was Tulsa's second line. I don't know how much difference there is in quality between their starters and their backups. That guy, like can cut without slowing down and that's going to be big. He he looked good. I mean, yeah. I think he's been maybe watching uh Kevin Smith video a little bit or something. Do you blame him? Kevin Smith's working with the team. No, heck no, I don't believe him. I mean, I don't uh don't blame him. Blame him, yeah. You know, once again it's Tulsa, but it's progress. I don't I don't believe that we had seen him all year, correct? Number 4, Mike Reed. I don't think so. That's kind of cool to, to see him, though. And to it was see finally nice to get has. some of our younger guys and some of our guys Absolutely. farther down the depth chart. Except for experience. Nick Patty, um, who came out and threw twice for one interception. He, he completed a pass. Uh, well, it, uh, To I, a guy in a white jersey. Yeah, honestly, yeah. He didn't complete any to our players. Uh, we, it, we, he's so hard to see on, on, the, on the field. He's very hard to see. It's... Uh, is he so much hard to see as opposed to is it hard for him to see our receivers? I think it's both. Now, we were both tweeting, and, <laughs> and we both had a had very similar comments. I believe I asked anyone if they had a boost receipt for a quarterback when he came in. <laughs> I forgot yeah. what you asked for. Yeah, I don't know, but... It's, you know, if they, if they run a hybrid-type offense, a more of a wildcat with Nick Patty, it would accentuate his you know abilities a bit more and you know how he would play because he doesn't have a bad arm i wonder if he can catch the ball are you already thinking about making him into jeff godfrey 
No, not particularly Jeff Godfrey, but maybe a maybe a receiver or something. You know, not into Jeff Godfrey. They're a little different. But uh, yeah, maybe a receiver. You never know. We we might need some next year. That we you know, we might need some next year. That is true. Some issues. Um, senior day coming up this next week. Uh, Against SMU, it's a perfect day to have senior day. Yeah. Well, uh, the other thing is though, it's at noon, and we don't bode well in noon games, as we all know. Plus, plus, here's another statistic that's kind of weird. How many games has UCF normally lost at home? What do you mean by that? Like How many season? years have we been undefeated at Bright House Stadium? And that would be exactly zero. Absolutely. So, we have one game to go at Bright House Stadium against SMU. Who has... The worst team in the conference. They have if the, not one of the worst teams in the entire college football. They have the same amount of wins as we have perfect seasons at home. <laughs> Oh, boy. But before we get there, defense. What did you see on defense? Our defense? Yes, UCF's defense. Because Tulsa, you just saw the scoring points against them and missed field goals. Yeah, our our defense was awesome. Um, Ozerikes had a interception. Um, I believe uh, DJ Killings. Alexander... Killings had one. Killings on the tip, had one. Yeah, and Alexander came over because they went over top of Ozerikes. He had to had to play, and Alexander made a great interception in the end zone. Right. That's right. My favorite thing about our defense, we gave up no hidden yardage on the first line. Yeah. It means our starters, when they made contact with the ball carrier, ball carrier went down. We knocked a few balls out. Some We forced some bad throws. We got minimal to none pass uh, pressure on their quarterback, on Evans. Yet he, our secondary was on it, and our linebackers were flying to the ball. We gave up no yards after the catch or, you know, Hidden yardage, as George O'Leary likes to call it. We did great. We did in the fourth quarter late when our backups were in. We had two plays where we missed a tackle here and there. But it was an excellent defensive effort. Sands the defensive line. Our line plays, and usually what Dix takes the game is your ability to control the line of scrimmage. And we did a relatively poor job of that against Tulsa. Yet we were able to compensate in other areas to, to get the win. Big plays on offense and excellent coverage and tackling on defense. True. Yeah. That was a good thing. The defense definitely has been the stars of the the team so far this year, I think, um, except for maybe one or two games for sure. You know, you know Holman cracked the 2,000-yard mark for the season. Yeah, that's yeah, good. And he's uh, approaching 20 touchdowns. You know, this is his first year. There's a chance he can crack 3,000 yards and 25 touchdowns. We want him to... You know, make a few bet, make a few better reads, make better reads. You know, limit the turnovers and some bad plays. And he's starting to do that. You know, that's statistically it's not a bad season, and we're six and three. He's not doing a terrible job. Yeah. And some of my friends and people I know, like someone who's sitting three feet from me, was calling for Nick Patty. I was just. To have Holman get the chance to see it from the sideline and to get a reality check. That's it. It only needed to be one series or whatever in that UConn game. Throwing four interceptions is a pretty pretty solid reality check. You, It's not like he doesn't didn't realize what he was doing when he was on the field. Right, but it's been proven if you see it from the sideline. How, how has it been proven? It's been done many times in sports. If they take somebody out. Well, they pull them out because they're playing like crap. Right, they p- pull them out because they're playing like crap. Let them see what's going on in the game without them in it at full speed. And then, you know, they go back in and and usually do a little bit better. At least, you know, be like, oh, well, yeah, I'm better than that guy that they just put in in place of me. That makes me want to want to play better. At least that. So whatever. You know, we did have some injuries. Um, Not bad, though. Stand back. Seems like he hurt his shoulder, but he should be fine, they said. Holman did go down at one point. Oh, that was but, a little scary at the oh, end of man. the half, man. Yeah, I was uh, I was really worried there. Um, I don't think that anything would be good with, with him hurt. He said in the post-game um, press conference that he just got a stinger. So that, that wasn't any, any big deal. Um, we did not have Rennell Hall, which I think hurt us. 
um, again, you know, in the... You said it didn't hurt us in the return game. Is that what you're referencing? I said it did hurt us in the return game. But not having him. What about Jordan Aikens? He had that long return, and he trucked the kicker. That was fantastic. It was, yeah, it was cool. Um, I'm glad that there was no, like, you know, penalty or anything there with him. Oh, I mean, there shouldn't be a penalty. I'm bigger than you. There shouldn't be, but you know in today's game, they sometimes look to... And we'll touch on something similar to that when we do the American recap. Yeah. Um. So, hopefully, maybe we'll... I mean. This it, next week being it's senior, senior day. day again. If Hall doesn't get to play, that's really going to be a bummer for him. Hamies um, can take a while. Yeah. But These he's a guys, competitor and he wants to get out there. I mean, George Leary's touched on in the past. He, he hasn't met a guy who wants to be on the field more yeah. than Renell Hall. All these seniors for us have been so important. The winningest class of all time? Yeah. UCF. Yeah. And there's a bunch of really, really good players in there, and we're going to really, really miss those guys. Next year, we will see what it's like not to have all those guys. Hopefully, there will be people to to step it up and and play just like them, and we'll love them just as you much know. One of them leave. is Taylor Oldham in the wide receiver position, and he dropped two touchdown opportunities. Mm-hmm. And then Wharton made that great catch, and then diving broke one tackle and diving off of another, outstretched over the. What the year goal is line. Oldham? Uh, he's a freshman or a sophomore. Sophomore, he's a sophomore. I think, yeah, he's a sophomore. He has potential, but you got to hold on to that ball, big boy. And Jordan Aikens did that early in this game. He set the tone. Yeah, he, he did. He set the tone for himself. He was focused yep. early, had some big plays, had that one bootleg out to him, another one over him. I mean, this is what we, moving forward, when we're talking about losing players, Jordan Aikens is another kid, true freshman, grown man, true freshman, that we need to produce next season as well as this season. And it was good to see him focused, into the game, no drops. Perryman had that one drop. You know, we all around us like, oh, well, there's Perryman's drop. Next play has that 45 yard reception because that's what he can do. Jordan actually talked to the the uh, the the press after the game as well, and he said that coach asked him to talk to the rest of the players before the game. And I don't know if that's because he's an older guy and he's like they're trying to set up his leadership now. You know, uh, maybe because he's a little bit more experienced. He was a professional athlete, you know, athlete. I thought that was kind of cool, though. And I found it kind of interesting that, you know, he was picked, you know, to talk to the to the team. And, you know, I think he said something about that. He wasn't here um, during all the losses to Tulsa. But, you know, the older guys were and he was talking to them. Come on, we want to get you a win, you know, against this Tulsa team. And, you know, so. I think that's cool, and and I think that's good to set him up as a leader now. Oh, he's more mature. Yeah, so I mean, I mean he can't. He was recruited originally in Blake's class, right? So now, I mean, he has that level of maturity, and you know the other guys see his work ethic and everything, and that he's been able to succeed. So while we're talking about this, before we get way way too far into this, I want to play the uh, the post game talk just this opening statement from O'Leary on this last game I see what Grumpy had to say just initial reaction a good overall win uh, offense defense and uh, you know some of the kicking game there's some field goals you like that back but I thought the kids went out and you know Tulsa's moved the ball and everybody offensively I thought the defense went out and played well and you know, uh, made some key plays when had to make it. And offensively, came up with some big plays, passing-wise, which I think opened, opened up the run game. And I think the uh, coverage teams were good in the special teams. And overall, good game. Time of possession was big in our favor, which uh, I think led to a great field position in a lot of situations. All right, so you heard it from the uh, coach's mouth. Dude, he wasn't grumpy about anything. He wasn't. It, he was awesome. happy about things that I'm unhappy about. Right. I mean, so... Well done, lads. You, I mean, that's in public, obviously. I don't know what he says in private, but, you know, he's, he said some disparaging things in public, too. So that performance made George O'Leary happy, and he's been around forever. So, yeah. you know, that means that we had a pretty good product on the One field. One more thing I would like to add. Um, add it. JJ, of course, again, had he always plays 100% every single play. What about the, the punt return off his face? <laughs> that he talked about actually in the in the press conference as well. He 
he totally took the the blame for that. He looked up or looked down to see where the defense was for a second, and like, yeah, it hit him right in the face. But but the catch that he made and the dive, you know, for the that, that was all effort. It was awesome. That guy, I am gonna miss him so much, and I cannot wait to see who. Hopefully, so you know some pundits, which is a funny word. Don't really think he can do anything at the next level. I I disagree wholeheartedly. I, yeah. He makes people miss. He makes yeah, plays. No. He has good routes. He has great hands. Even though I saw him drop one first time all year that I could remember watching him drop a pass. But he just makes things happen. There's period. a couple of other white guy wide receivers that come to my thoughts when I think of JJ. Who? Wes Welker, number one. All right. Who's number two? There may be others. I don't know, to be honest with you. There, so, there may be others. But, but you said a couple. Now, this reminds me, did you ever watch Coming to America? Yes. Yeah. When they were in the barbershop? No. And they were talking about great heavyweights, Joe Lewis, Muhammad Ali, and he said Rocky Marciano. He's like, well, every white guy brings up Rocky Marciano. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I mean, JJ's a, a fairly big guy, too. He's not... He's not a small wide receiver. Um, you know, I, I don't know. He, I, I think he can make a nice career for himself as a niche possession wide receiver. How big is Gronkowski? Is he, like, way bigger? Oh, he's he's about 6'5", you know, 240 pounds. J.J.'s about 6'2", 6'3", you know, 215. The athleticism that Gronkowski has over J.J. is significant. But the same type of player is what I is what I think as far as, like, Hard nose, grinding it. I think like, JJ's tougher. Yes, that's that's the type of player though that it is in the NFL right now that reminds me, or you know, in the same thoughts personally. I think JJ has a, has a nice career going forward. Yeah, I I hope maybe they get him up here in UCF North. That would be pretty nice to have um, JJ and Blake. They need a they need yeah, a possession. They do. <laughs> They do. I mean, Allen Hurts has done a good job for himself, and you have Marquis Lee, who's had a disappointing season. Allen Robinson's a good big receiver, but you get someone like J.J. in there as a possession receiver to move the chains, to have that time of possession, which he's accustomed to. Mm-hmm. Plus, he has a uh, comfortable level with uh, Blake Bortles. So I know we want every UCF night to go to UCF North. Yeah, but I know it's not going to happen like that. But that would be, I think, even more of than Storm Johnson and Blake. I think as the as the the two people that should be maybe It'd be together. almost a trifecta. Though yeah. you, though you have adopted Denard Robinson. Yeah, I like him. I do. I mean, he's I like him. I you know coming from where he came from as a quarterback, you know, to play in the. I don't know for some reason. I know that this sounds a little crazy, but not just because of the hair or whatever. But he reminds me of Jamal Charles a little bit, just a little bit. And I'm a big Jamal Charles fan, so for some reason I see something in Denart Robinson that Jamal Charles was not that impressive in the beginning. He wasn't. I thought, man, does this guy run weird? He like he has a real upright like you know stance, you know, just the way he he runs just weird, you know. And I didn't, you know, didn't really like him at first. And look at him now, you know. So maybe he's produced for you. Oh man. I think he's one of the, the best running backs in the entire NFL. Jamal Charles. Understandably so. So, our last home game, senior day, at the noon. terrible, yes, at, at noon, at high noon, hopefully it won't be 93 degrees. I haven't looked ahead at the I don't the think it's yet. going to be. Thank no. God it's, you know, November and not, you know. Against the winless Mustangs. Of, you know, it's a self-imposed death penalty they've had this season. June Jones just gave up recruiting a couple years ago, gave up on the team this season. They gave up last night in the last moments of the fourth quarter to continue their winless streak. You know, you said something earlier about there was a certain play. The, the final play sends the, the squib kick in the extra point where Andre Davis, the stud wide receiver for USF, had a, a very blatant push off on fourth down and fourth and goal to catch the game winning touchdown or game tying at that moment, pr- pretty much the game winning touchdown. You know, had that offensive pass interference been called, and it clearly would have been called if that was Brashad Perryman because we got nailed for that multiple times against UConn. It won them the game. It cost SMU 
you know, their first win the season and I'm mixed about that. Because there's a good chance USF loses to Memphis next week. And if that's the case, where their last chance at and bowl eligibility. It'd be great to prevent them from being bowl eligible. It'd be easier to prevent them from being bowl eligible if they had lost to SMU. But I have mixed emotions also about that call. You know, I have no problem for the offensive player to have a chance at the ball. And obviously a couple times we've come on a short end of the stick, but that was it was clear and blatant that he just straight shoved the guy right in front of the, the field judge, catches the touchdown, pretty much game over. And I kind of felt bad for SMU because they were up 13 nothing and they played prevent tried not to lose defense as opposed to winning the game when Mike White came in and boom, two quick touchdowns and that was it. You know, USF escaped with a victory. Yeah. You know, I, I was probably rooting for SMU to be honest with you there. Um, Cause I think I root for everybody that plays against UCF. My favorite team I'd like to say to people is UCF and Kansas and anybody who plays USF and Missouri. So, I mean, I was rooting for SMU because if they did get a win, then then our opponent's winning percentage would have improved. Right. So next week alone, because USF, you know, we still have yet to play them. So moving into the American, you know, it was a terrible game. Did you watch any of that USF SMU game? I did not. It was bad. They had a a brand new quarterback in Flowers, who's the future, supposedly of USF. You know, his he had a brother die on Thursday night, man. That that's a lot to take into a game and, and a lot of tons of emotions from your first, you know, your first game, all this stuff happening off the field. He didn't look that good and it looked really good for SMU. They just couldn't capitalize on a lot of situations. And then at the end, they just fell apart. So USF was able to literally escape with a win. Did you watch any temple Penn state? I actually did not get to see any of the American games this week. Oh. But I have the scores here, and <laughs> Penn State wins thirty to thirteen. They uh, let me tell you, PJ Walker started off solid. Temple came out inspired, and then Penn State got some pressure on Walker, and he kept throwing the ball to them, and it got out of hand quick for Temple. Uh, it showed the the disparity in mental fortitude on the two sides. As soon as things started getting tough, Temple folded. Now. We both know that they're a program that's young and they're up and coming and this could be a learning experience. But Penn State, you know, Penn State just got on them. And it, it broke loose right before the, the half and game over after that. Stop watching. Do you know how many teams there are in the uh, FCS? FCS? Or F- FBS, I'm sorry. How many teams are in the FBS? 125, I believe, or 128. I need to pay more attention. I think it must be 128 because <laughs> I'm looking at the rankings for uh, SMU here. For passing yards, they're 104th. For rushing yards, they're 124th. For points for, 128th. And points against, 127th. There must be only 128 teams. Oh, you can add some teams from the <laughs> FCS in there that do better. I know. I'm just like, like Bethune Cookman. I think Bethune Cookman beats SMU right now. Probably. There's quite a few teams that probably. I mean, everybody this year obviously. I has, guys getting uh, ready to say quite a few teams. Right now, it's every team. <laughs> North <laughs> Texas, they lost to the Mean Green, who have the only stadium that's certified green. You know, is it really certified environmentally? Green? Yes. Wow. And then upon completion, the little tidbit you find out just random stuff. Yeah. Mean Green. All right, how about Memphis and Tulane? Did we talk about that one? We have not. So one, just like the the Temple Penn State game, it started early. Uh, Tulane was was tough. Nickerson had some good plays in the secondary, and then man, Memphis just took it over, especially in that third quarter where they scored twenty one points unanswered. Paxton Lynch found a good rhythm, a good pick six by Tanner Lee, who had three interceptions on the day. And that was it. That's just pretty much sealed the deal for Memphis. From there on out, it was just a, a formality of what the the end of the game was going to be. And it finished out thirty eight to seven, Memphis over Tulane. They've guaranteed themselves a winning record. You know, Fuente is a hot coach coming up, someone who is on the fans' radar for UCF. And Tulane, they still have a lot to work on. Memphis, Memphis is right now. You know, they're five and one in the conference. You know, we don't get to play them, unfortunately. So. They control their own destiny to at least be co-champions of this conference. 
Yeah, that's uh, it's unfortunate when we don't get to play these teams that um, you know can really have something to do with the the conference championship, and especially, I guess next year that pro- whole problem should be solved because there will be an actual conference championship game with next year Navy coming in to play in the American, and and, and hopefully, to be honest with you, hopefully we get out of the American pretty soon, but that's a whole other story. We won't by so. next season. And there was one more game, a shootout with a weird ending, the Cincinnati ECU game. What was weird about the ending, Troy? Do tell us. Do tell. Did you obviously didn't, didn't catch any it. of it? Yeah, I didn't see it. All right. <laughs> Some terrible play calling the last minute by, by Cincinnati. Gives the ball up to ECU. ECU scores. Then, uh, what was the final score? 54-46. Yeah, so then Cincinnati gets the ball, gets the field goal. ECU's moving down. Was it? And then within the final minute two, here comes Cincinnati. Scores twice and gets and runs out of home with a victory after Shane Carden brought ECU back into the game after being down early. It was a shootout. Clearly, a hundred points scored. Not much defense. Gunnar Keel did solid. Carden did solid. You know, Cincinnati is tied with us, and we're, I guess we're a half game back if this was baseball. But really. A chance to all be co-champions, though Memphis holds the victory over Cincinnati for their only loss in conference. It would have been great had ECU beat Cincinnati, knocked them out of the opportunity. Then when we beat ECU, take them out of the opportunity, we, you know, hopefully someone would fail Memphis. I still think that ECU is going to be a, a game. It's going to be a heck of a game. I, I, I agree. That, We're going into you know, Greenville. Yep. North Carolina. And... <laughs> I think we can do it. I just think that it's going to be it's going to be tough. Of course, I mean yeah, they still score a lot of points. They score a lot of points, and yeah. they they have a hell of a crowd there that really brings the fun. Speaking of which, what was it, thirty five and change for us in Florida freezing weather? And I say Florida because I'll preface it with the fact that that was cold for us. Thirty five, yeah, thirty five thousand plus. Oh yeah, yeah, is what we had in our plus game. the twelve people that that Tulsa brought. I don't know if Tulsa brought twelve. Well, that's what the I, I saw that on Twitter. UCF Sports, uh, one of the oh, was UCF, that Brandon? No, I don't think it was Brandon, but one of the UCF, uh, one of the UCF uh, sports Thanks. things. I think it was unofficial, the official one from the school. I mean, you you could have that. easily counted had we taken the time. All the blue I think jackets. That, I seriously don't think that it was more than twelve or thirteen over there. I mean, it was you know it was kind of dark, and they were wearing dark colors. So, so we really we were wearing black, I, I couldn't and really we were wearing it. black jerseys. It was great. <laughs> That's why I brought that up. Yeah, we wore the black jerseys and played really well. I don't understand how the quarterback sees the players at night in black jerseys. Anyway, what he does is he throws it up and let our superior athletes run underneath the there ball. There you go. That's it. All right, so. I think we've gotten to the point where we need to play this question from John. Oh, yeah, get John's DC. question in there. So Thanks, John. Do, do that real quick. Yeah, this is John calling in from D.C. Uh, another question for you. asked about, you know, potential uh, bowl matchup for the P5 school uh, before that UConn game. And obviously a very big disappointment, um, you know, a lot of mental letdowns. And that's kind of the crux of my question is, you know, mental toughness is huge in football. It starts in the weight room, goes to the practice field, and certainly you need it on game day. Um, do you think this team has that mental toughness to bring it together and, and match up um, you know, after what we saw at UConn um, and really sustain uh, games to adversity? I know we saw that a lot last year with the leadership that Bortles brought, but uh, it seems like we're missing that X factor, even in some of our senior leaders. I uh, just want to get your thoughts on that. Thanks. Bye. Great question. Especially it was a good after, question. That was an awesome question. Thank at, you. After we had that lit down against UConn, the answer to that, in my opinion, is yes, to an extent. And I mean that because before I've talked about how we recruit you know, kids with higher academic standards, you know, more mature young men. And we have a ton of seniors on this team. We have quite a bit of senior leadership. They might not be as dynamic of leaders as we've had with you know McCray Twins and with, with Blake, but they're still leaders. They still know what's on the line. The SMU game is their final home game. The ECU game and the USF game chances to to once again win the conference. They're going to bring it together. There is a certain level of toughness. You see it on the field with certain individuals. Now there's some people who seem to have lost a bit of maturity, especially, you know, as we've seen it in the suspensions of two senior kickers and how much that hurt us. It hurt us and it didn't because it didn't affect the outcome win or loss, but it, it affected the line on the game per se in in, in field position but 
this team does have a lot of senior leadership. They are a very intelligent group of young men. They know what's at stake. They're going to bring it their all. Are they going to be able to execute on every play? No. And that has a lot to do on the offensive line. Have they learned from certain situations that, you know, how to react and overcome when they have a bad play? I think Holman's starting to show that. And a lot of this is predicated upon Holman's progression. And he's not a senior. You know, this is his first season. Especially this is, you know, first season starting. Unlike last year when, you know, he, he did play, so it wasn't his first season. However, he's starting to come along. You know, we have another soft game, as we've touched on, and everyone knows against SMU. And thing to work on execution. Yeah, I'll tell you my answer the, to this question after next week. Because if if we can go and have the the problems that we had at Connecticut, to be honest with you, that's where I would say no is the answer to this question because of a game like that where there was mental mistakes, where there was not mental preparation. Some now, of that was on, honestly, and sorry to cut you off, I believe a lot of that had on the call plays and the coaching staff. It was. I mean, but that, you know, I think that is all-encompassing as well. Um, their mental toughness is just as much, you know, our problem as the team's mental, <laughs> you know. Well, it, it, it's through a lot of traits that the coaches have rub off onto the players. Right. So I think, you know, for sure, yes, we do if – we can get through these last couple games against SMU and, and then UCF or USF. I do that every time. So do the referees, whatever. Sorry. Um, I think that it will show. And I think that the guys will, you know, have a little bit more. Um, what's the, I'm, I don't know, I'm but not, consistency. I don't get the word. Yeah, consistency, consistency is what we're and, looking for against SMU, which I honestly believe we'll have. I think we're starting to turn the corner a bit, and especially with Holman's ability to, with so many pass rushers in his face, to to make significantly better reads. Now he's been up and down, so that means he's due for a bad game against SMU. Yeah, I hope not. I don't we, think it's going to happen. Do not need any of that, any more of that stuff, especially now being the last few games of the season and, and where we really need to turn it on. The only game left that truly worries me, and I know USF plays up beyond their potential when they play us, is the ECU game. Right. I, I I truly believe we're gonna we're gonna smack SMU and we're gonna punch USF in the prostate and embarrass them in front of their nine fans and in front of our ten thousand fans. I hope so. I hope so. Um, all right, real quick, as the end of uh, us talking really about football, football, and we're gonna go on to basketball here for a little bit. Um, Let's make our score predictions for next week against SMU. Go for it, Andrew. I am going to say that we win um, 21 to 3. That's actually a fair score. I can believe that. SMU. Don't ask me how many points that is. I'm just joking, but anyway. At SMU can't run the ball, and, and they don't run often because they're, they're always down, so they're going to throw the ball more. Hopefully it's 59-3. to three, It, it anyway, won't be. I know. And, and only because George O'Leary is old school, and he'll just want to run out the clock and time of possession, and it'll hold us into the 30s. The only time we're going to score a ton of points is when we give up a ton of points. Right. So they can't tackle. I saw tons and tons of missed tackles in, in that game against USF. My first game that I actually sat down and watched SMU – is wow, that was bad. They can't throw the ball well. They can't protect well. They do a decent job in the secondary. So I'll give them that. You know, this is going to be a good game for us. Thirty-four to ten, because we'll probably give them a couple opportunities in it. Because the guys might not be completely dialed in all the time because they're going to take an early lead. But it's going to be another convincing victory. And it's going to be a back-to-back solid performance, something we've been missing. We're going to get the consistency here. And a Moving. win for a noon game and then a win. For the seniors. you got to remember, this is, for this the is seniors, senior day. Yep, and that's going to be, the, you know, some of those guys want to go out at home and, and make something happen. I think you're going to see an amazing game from J.J., as always. If you but, give him the ball. But Hall, maybe we'll see a return from Hall We're, we're going to see Hall way. play. You know, um, I'd like to see that. Um Man, I I'm 
bummed that all these guys are going to be gone after this year. Karen Splummer, um, he's going to sit there. Yeah. He's going to tackle your QB, yep. your running back, yep. your wide receiver, your he's grandma, gonna, <laughs> your little sister, <laughs> and your soul. He's probably going to probably gonna hit somebody good for all of us to cheer about. I know. So. Gathers. Yep. You know, Ozerites. God, what a bummer. I just can't believe all Alexander. these guys are going. It happens every year. I know. That's the worst thing about college football. The worst thing is you only have four years or five years, really, to build these teams. Or if you're Case Keenum, nine. Yeah. (laughs) It was really six, but it seemed like a whole freaking decade. Yeah. You got to figure out some way to get around that. But, uh, yeah, it's a bummer. Um, Anyway, so I am off here in about an hour to go see the opening game of the men's basketball season. Men's basketball. Um, I was fortunate enough to go rock the Georgia College and State University. The Liberal Arts College of Georgia used to be a women's college. Really? Known for a couple of writers. Huh. No sports. Interesting. Uh, hey, listen, when you get bored waiting for a game and you can Wikipedia them, you learn random crap. Yeah. Like that. You have a lot of random crap. I think we we both actually have quite a bit of random crap, but I think you've read Wikipedia a little bit more than I have. Even though I like to read it. I do. It's true. It's informative. Yeah. I don't care what people say, how you could change it. Yeah, whatever. Just don't quote oh, it in your research wrong. papers. Yeah, whatever. But Just anyway. use them to figure out what you need to research. Yeah. So you can catch the game tonight. Uh, it is 6 p.m. Uh, I think we said this earlier on ESPN3 or watch ESPN. Or you can hear it on 740 The Game. Um, yeah, all that. It's a, it's a good way to start the season. I was really impressed with B.J. Taylor in our exhibitions, led us in scoring both times. Brandon Goodwin has really stepped his game up. He had a double-double last season against Stetson. Um, right Justin McBride used his size. You know, Stetson's going to be a little bit bigger. And, uh, you know, it, it's nice. We have eight newcomers to this team. You know, we're really starting to 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 have a youth in them. I mean, we have Casey Wilson's our only senior. So this is a, a good game for us to start off. We, you're going to get a lot of new faces out there. And they're looking to... Uh, to get this season off right, we have a bit of a soft out of conference, and just so we get some chemistry and get some wins and some experience for these younger players, and because we really need I think, chemistry. You know, I don't think this year is probably going to be the year that they get everything together and you know really you know make their name in the American basketball, but I think it's coming. I really do, especially with some of the recruits that there. We there was something we didn't Wednesday. Yeah. And and Thursday for Chance McSpadden, but we added a seven foot six Taco Fall, you know, out of Tavares. I mean he, he turned down Georgia Tech and Georgetown and amongst other schools that come to UCF. That is a big dude. Like he can I saw a picture of him, what was he like standing underneath the goal and had his hands on He was grabbing the rim. He doesn't even have to, to leave his feet when he grabs Doesn't the even rim. have to like get on his tippy toes. He just he had I mean, a triple like, double his first game of the season. Um, against Jones at Oak Ridge. He, he's raw, only been playing for two years, but he uses his size well. He's got to bulk up a bit. He's not quite Sean Bradley thin, but he'll get there when he gets into the weight room. Chad Brown, power forward coming out of Deltona. Kid's athletic. You know, I, I don't know if he got enough love for exactly how talented he is. I'm excited about having him. Chance McSpadden, shooting guard. You know, these are all local guys, all four of them that we brought in. And it's nice. You know, B.J. Taylor... The local guy, Adonis Hernan, and Enriquez, forgive me, Adonis, you know, the local guy. And then I, I can't, F. Pignani, I could spell it better than I could pronounce it. He's, you know, a Juco player coming out, but he was a local boy coming out of university, coming back here to UCF. Sign, who's a, a great wing player, very athletic, uh, like a little bit shorter version of Shahid Davis, who is new this year to us. And then we're going to have A.J. Davis next year, you know, who's a transfer. So we have a lot of a lot of talent this year that's in and next year. So, I mean, we're going to be deep. You know, one kid might have to go. You know, that could be Daquan Walker. You know, you don't, you don't know who that is. But we have a, a lot of talent on this team this season. It, we're going to, you know, you were talking about the American, how people don't expect us to win. It's going to be a bit of a struggle. And that's true. But with the talent we do have with, with B.J. and Enriquez, and Justin McBride, we're going to win some games. People aren't going to give us a chance. Absolutely. I just, I, you know, 
I think that this whole thing is coming. You know, it's, it, UCF has been known for now starting to get known as the football, you know, school. We've always I been think, a football school. I think that in the future here, you know, they're really going to step it up. I think the recruiting thing is is coming together for them. Well, well, it, it's coming together because because we over recruited. We we got a little a little too dirty, and it, it's hurt us because we you know, right, and we didn't have you know a lot of couldn't play exhibitions we couldn't have official visits we had you know diminished scholarships and you know next year that finally all goes away and moving forward UCF's looking like a really good program come out and enjoy the game we're, we're exciting to watch we're great from downtown absolutely I'll tell you we can we're, we're like the the Orlando Magic with Dennis Scott and Nick Anderson and them 3D from downtown we, we could use a little bit more uh you know post game and, and passes into the post but when when things are getting rough, we can we can storm back in the games. And you can find the entire UCF men's basketball schedule on UCFNightlinePodcast.com, dot com. By the way, there you go. Just just so uh, I get that out there, and you can find a recap of that uh, last exhibition game written by our own Troy Andrzejk here, and uh, written in English. I actually said your name and said it correctly, I believe. That is correct. Wow. That's, that's The next one's going to be by Mr. We've Fegley been doing here. this for so long, and I, you know, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to have a little article. Hopefully, it'll be up there by tomorrow morning um, about this game tonight and maybe my outlook on the, the, the next few games or something like that. Um, they also play Thursday night, November 20th at 7 p.m., they play Eckerd, and then the 23rd and the 26th, Davidson and Bethune-Cookman. Da- or Davidson. I'm sorry, sorry, USC Upstate. Where the hell did you get Davidson from? At Davidson is the 26th. It's, it's oh, okay. USC I see. Upstate first, and then Davidson. Davidson, that, that, that could be interesting. Wasn't yeah, Davidson one of the... One of the ones that got into the tournament a couple of years ago and Davidson caused... has had a long history of a solid program. Uh, one of the colleges I attended, one of many, was the University of Tennessee Chattanooga in the Southern Conference with Davidson. And when I was there, they've we, caused some trouble in the tournament a couple of years, right? They have. I mean, they've taken some big names out. They, they had uh, Devin Curry there. And uh, Davidson's had a solid area basketball school. They've been known for basketball. The Southern Conference I is a really actually, good basketball conference Davidson for being a small conference. Davidson may have beat my Kansas Jayhawks in the first round one year in Oklahoma City. That sucks for you guys. Yeah, which that was weird, but that was you know the first time I'd ever heard Davidson them, is a perennial basketball school, so you always expect a good game from so Davidson. So that could be exciting, November 26th. Um, and then November 30th, Bethune-Cookman. Um, and then, you know, getting into December... There's one more home game. They have six home games in a row here, which is is pretty cool. Then Florida State, uh, Illinois, Chicago, Florida, Atlantic, Detroit, Southeast Louisiana, and then we get into the you know the, the, conference, uh, the play. conference play. So I look forward to uh, seeing your article tomorrow, and uh, look forward to a, a good win for the Knights tonight. Before we finish off, last night two to one victory for our women's soccer team here at home over Georgia in the NC- first round of the NCAA tournament. Well done, ladies. Absolutely awesome. They're going to play Wisconsin, and it looks like it's going to be in Tallahassee. Hey, Wisconsin's a solid program, but our girls are, are playing. Thank God it's in Tallahassee and not in Wisconsin. Yeah. I don't think you could play soccer on snow, could you? We have, and we've lost before. Really? Our girls have had to travel up north when it was snowing. It was 10 degrees out. Terrible, terrible. I play soccer all the time, and I, I love playing soccer in the rain. It's okay in the Florida winter, right? but... You know, especially outdoor, and you have moments where you don't have to do a ton of running, you you feel that weather pretty quick. Oh, yeah. So I, I really like our girls in the second round. If they win that, it looks like they're going to play FSU, the uh, number one seed. So well done, ladies, and I look forward to more success from you. All right. So you can find uh, all this information again on www.ucfnightlinepodcast.com. And don't forget to... Give us a call and ask us your questions. Of course, now we're, we want questions on men's basketball as well. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Here well. comes the music. 407-205-7427. All righty. So thank you very much. This has been Andrew Fagley on episode number 17 with... 
the incredibly handsome one, <laughs> Troy Andrzak. Thank you that. for listening. Thanks. Oh, you tell me I'm handsome all the time. I've never said that, actually. All the time. <laughs> With your eyes. Oh, God. Victory is our cry. P-S-E-T-O-R-I-T-O-R-I-T-O-R-I-T-O-R-I-T-O-R-I-T-O-R-I-T-O-R-I-T-O-R-I-T-O-R-I-T-O-R-I-T-O-R-